Welcome back to the Michigan Business Beat, brought to you on the Michigan Business Network. I'm Chris Holman, coming to you from the Policy Conference at Mackinac Island. And we have with us right now Susie Corbin. Uh, you are with Leo. Actually, you're with Chris Holman right now, yeah. but you represent yeah. Leo, which yeah. is... You know, I'm Susan, I don't want Susie getting out there and people thinking I'm a Susie. But what, sorry. Did I say that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I am so sorry. That's okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Well, Susan, let's, yeah. let's talk about you. Uh -huh. You are right in the middle of probably the biggest challenge there is in the state of Michigan for every employer, mm -hmm. and that is getting people. Yes, yes. Well, um, we're all working on this together. I mean, this is an effort that not just one government department can handle. Right. It's something we all need to be facing together. So, right. yes. So, uh, LEO is labor and economic opportunity. Yes. Okay, what uh -huh. all is encompassed in that? Well, when the governor created the department, she felt that it was really important that we have some key parts of state government very closely aligned, working together, moving in the same direction. So she wanted to bring together all of our workforce development activity, our community development activity, and um, our housing, and uh, as well as our economic development activity. Uh, we have some other agencies in addition to those uh, broad That's areas. That's a huge area, um, Susan. <laughs> So yeah. you do have some other people that are uh, chipping in on other areas of that, right? We have a strong, right? strong team. Yeah, yes. you got some. You got some talent agencies, really, which um, uh, I think is Stephanie Buckhorn. And yes, some Stephanie like Buckhorn. That. She is our uh, director of employment and training. Right. She's had her career in state government, working on workforce development issues, and so yeah, she's a strong, strong part of our team. And of course, she works with all of our local partners in the MWAs, the 16 MWAs around the state of Michigan. All right. So let's talk a little bit about how you got here. What was your path to this mm -hmm. position? Um, well, you know, I've had my career in state government. Um, I started as a student assistant in the early 1980s, uh, working in the Office of International Development in what was then the Department of Commerce. Uh, uh, so I worked for directors at the time were Ralph Gerson and Doug Ross, uh, names that are familiar to many people who attend this conference. Yep. Um, and, you know, as part of that, I, in my career, I spent some time living in the People's Republic of China and, you know, working with our state on our relationships in China. Um, like, uh, you know, some people, I took some time off uh, to raise my two sons. Um, but then I, you know, wanted to continue my career in state government, and so I've had the opportunity to work in many state departments throughout my career. Uh, I did some work in the Department of Transportation, uh, the Department of Education, working for the state superintendent. Uh, then I was in the uh, administration of Governor Granholm. I was her director of appointments her first term and then her second term. I was a deputy director in the Department of uh, energy, uh, labor, and economic growth. Yeah, I know they were changing the name of that uh, around a little bit. It yeah. was d -leg for a while. and then d -leg, it was, Lara, yeah, Leo, yeah. A yeah. whole bunch of things. Yeah. Um, so China, tell me about China. Well, that was in the mid-80s. Yep. Um, Michigan has a sister state relationship with Sichuan province. Right. Um, you know, of course, our relationship, the relationship that we have that the United States has with China is a, a little it's, bit different today. It's put it in the than back it was, shelf. Yes, than it was then. <laughs> um, but as part of the work that I did in the Department of Commerce, we hosted the first two Chinese delegations that visited the state. And um, I was working for the director of Asian operations. And, you know, as a student, she just appreciated my skill set and gave me a lot of great opportunities. And um, one of the delegations was the governor of the province. And I had been studying French all through high school and college. But the governor of the province uh, went back and made arrangements for me to come and spend a year at Sichuan University. So, wow. um, so That's I, big. Yeah. Yeah. So Good I for you. lived in China when things were um, very different than they are today. Yeah. They, and I, I suspect they may get back there. So I, I'm hoping we that's, we all hope so. That, that's mm -hmm. where we're going. Okay, so what so what's on the horizon? I mean, what what are we looking at? What's what's going to be the solution to this thing? We can't make babies overnight, right? Right, right. Um, it's a multi-pronged approach. Um, in Michigan or in, in our department, 
Um, we're focusing on the governor's economic agenda. She uh, wants us to focus on growing the middle class. And so we have uh, some significant programs that will help do that. She set a goal of 60% of our uh, population getting a post-secondary degree by 2030. And our hallmark program under that is Michigan Reconnect. And that provides a tuition-free pathway for anybody over the age of 25 to complete a two-year uh, community college degree or a skill certificate. We know that if people can get stronger skills, if they could get a community college degree, they're going to be much more inclined to go back into the workforce because they know they're going into a better job with a higher wage. So uh, focusing on the middle class, providing support to our small businesses. Uh, we've had, since the pandemic, we've had incredible growth in Michigan with our small businesses. I think um, in uh, our latest numbers, 2019, I believe, well, it was beyond 2019, but 170,000 new jobs were created by small businesses in Michigan. So providing more support, and the MEDC is right there, you know, working on expanding the programs that they have for small businesses. Um, and then um, working on creating vibrant communities. We know that in order to keep our talent in Michigan, to uh, you know, bring our talent back to Michigan or to attract talent, people need to have vibrant communities um, where, you know, as a draw where they, where they want to live. Well, I'll tell you what, then people don't realize when there's artwork on the sidewalks in a town, yeah. it gives you a whole different perspective. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. Yeah, things like that are, are absolutely important to, um, you know, to where we live. Well, Susan Corbin, let us know if there's anything we can do to help because you got a big job ahead of you. Okay, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. We look forward to that. All right. This is the Michigan Business Network, and we are broadcasting from Mackinac Island for the policy conference put on by the Detroit Regional Chamber of Commerce. I'm Chris Holman. Thanks for being with us.